Welcome to Electron Line. So here's a diagram of an inactive black hole. So first of all, what do we mean by an inactive black hole? It's a black hole that's not actively trying to swallow up material, trying to pull in material. Of course, it doesn't eat material, it pulls it in gravitationally, but if it's not in the act of actually pulling in material, it's called an inactive black hole, as opposed to an active black hole that is currently pulling in material. And yes, black holes, when they have the opportunity, will pull in more material and cause the mass inside the black hole to grow. So here, the diagram is fairly simple. There's three things belonging to the diagram. We have in the very center what we call the singularity. That's where all the mass is congregated. We think of it as virtually a zero volume and therefore almost an infinite den density. And maybe it is zero volume and infinite density. We don't know. We really don't know. Then we have what we call a region, which is a spherical region called the event horizon. It's a boundary. And that boundary means that if you're inside the event horizon, in order to get out of that, in order to get away from the black hole, you must be traveling faster than the speed of light. The escape speed is faster than the speed of light, and of course, since nothing can move faster than the speed of light, and including light, nothing can get out. So anything that's inside the event horizon can simply not leave the event horizon. You're stuck there forever. So once you fall in, anything, including light, it can come out. So for example, let's say you fall into the event horizon, and let's say you can survive the fall into the event horizon, which would be impossible, but let's say you could. For, and let's say you're inside the event horizon, you're on your way to the center of the black hole, and here you are, of course, you're in your space suit, and you happen to have a flashlight with you. So you turn on your flashlight, and you remember from when you were young that you had learned how to do Morse code. And you sit there and you push the button on the flashlight, sending a Morse code message to your loved ones, telling them how much you love them and you'll never see them again. And so the light will come out of the flashlight, but since it's not going fast enough, it will simply get pulled into the black hole. It simply can't leave the event horizon. So no messages can ever come out. And that's the reason why they call that the event horizon, because no events inside can leave the event horizon. Now, if you're at the very boundary, in order to get away from the boundary of the event horizon, you must travel at the speed of light. So at that point, light could essentially leave, as, well, maybe you want to be one millimeter outside of it, and then you can leave that region. And finally, if you're well beyond the event horizon, then the escape speed will be less than the speed of light. And so that's the definition of the event horizon. Finally, we have what we call the Schwarzschild radius, r sub s. That is the distance from the singularity at the center to the event horizon. And that's a distance that's not constant. It depends upon how much mass is inside the event horizon. And usually we express the mass inside a black hole in terms of the number times the solar mass. Remember, anything that's two and a half or less times the mass of the sun will end up in a neutron star. Therefore, if it exceeds that limit, it will become a black hole. So typically, black holes have, have as a minimum mass in here about two and a half to three times the mass of the sun. So the Schwarzschild radius is therefore equal to something called approximately two miles times the number of times the mass of the sun are inside. So for example, if there's three solar masses inside, that's how we call it, then two miles times three is six miles. So that would be six miles from here to there if the three solar masses. If there's five solar masses, it would be 10 miles. 10 solar masses, it would be 20 miles and so forth. Or if you like kilometers better, it's about three kilometers. So if there's three solar masses, it would be nine kilometers from the center to the event horizon. If there's 10 solar masses, it would be 30 kilometers from there to there. Now, those are approximate values to make it easy to calculate it. If you want the exact value, it's 2,964 meters times the number of solar masses, so slightly less than three kilometers and a little bit less than two miles. How do we come up with that radius? Well, we look for the escape velocity, which can be calculated as being the square root of twice g times the mass of the object divided by the radius. And so if we solve this equation for the radius, and in this case we want the Schwarzschild radius, we then want to call the velocity the speed of light. We square both sides, so this becomes v squared or c squared. We exchange the r and the c squared. 
We calculate it and we come up with 2,964 meters and that's how we find the radius, the Schwartz style radius. It's 2,964 meters times the number of solar masses if you want to be a little bit more exact. But for us, it really doesn't matter. Take two miles, three kilometers. That's good enough for us. And so that is how we define a black hole graphically. Three things, the singularity, the event horizon, and the Schwarzschild radius. And of course, that is, that is only in case the, the black hole is inactive. And that's how it's done. So the event horizon, it's a sphere, right? Not a disk. No, the event horizon, yes, it's a sphere. That's correct, yeah. It's a spherical boundary, an imaginary spherical boundary. It doesn't vary. Well, it will grow. If it doesn't grow. Yeah, if the mass stays the same, it's fixed, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. You got it.